Hi everyone, thanks for joining us for Global Entrepreneurship Week. We are gonna join most ventures for a fireside chat alongside our US-based startups. I'm gonna to introduce Tora with Most Ventures to introduce their startups that are joining us today for Global Entrepreneurship Week. Uh, thank you very much, Karina. Uh, hello, global community. I'm, my name is Tori Amman, and I'm really excited to have the opportunity to present some of the uh, most brilliant Central Asian startups here during the call. Uh, I'm managing partner of Most Ventures, and at Most Ventures, we're trying to build a self-reinforcing system of tech entrepreneurs, investors, and corporations by educating them, by providing them with infrastructure, uh, acceleration programs, and scaling opportunities. Uh, so today we have here uh, three really exciting startups. Uh, we have Cerebra, represented by Jean Dossi and Bergenov. We have AI Dent, represented by Asilzad Isataeva. Uh, and we have... Um, uh, we have uh, um, ADAPT, represented by uh, Bexot. Um, uh, so really excited uh, to have this opportunity. And uh, without further ado, I'll pass the word to them. Uh, hey, guys. Um, my name is Jandos. Jandos. I'm head of growth at Cerebra. Um, Thanks, Karina, for hosting us. Uh, thanks, Tore, for um, inviting us. And pleasure to be here. Hi, I'm Marcel, and I'm CEO at AA Dentist. Uh, nice to meet you. Thank you for inviting. Then I believe you all have one other startup that's joining us. They can introduce themselves as well. Tori, if you want to direct us to your other startup that's joining us. Uh, sure. Uh, so the third startup is uh, Adapt. Uh, the, uh, the original speaker was supposed to be Bakhtan Dos, CEO, but he is currently replaced by, by his colleague Begzot, uh, who I invite to introduce himself. Uh, okay, my name is Begzot. I'm from Uzbekistan. I'm not a startup, so that's it. All right, well, I am joined here by our three startups here in the US. Um, Atish, if you wanna go ahead and uh, introduce yourself with Exchange Energy, and then we're going to go to Monica De La Rosa and, J and Joshua Silvia. Thanks, Karina. Uh, I'm Atish Patel, president, co-founder of Xcharge uh, Energy here in the US. Um, we're an EV infrastructure startup that's bringing a disruptive technology to the North American uh, marketplace. Great. And Joshua, if you would like to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Joshua, and my brother is also on the call. Also, that, that's uh, Jacob. So we're with the Regulated Cloud. Uh, we do uh, cloud engineering consulting, and we're currently transitioning into uh, consumer products. And Monica De La Rosa also joins us today. Hello. Hi, I'm Monica De La Rosa. I'm the CEO of Eco Rescue, and uh, we are a startup that breeds worms on food waste. And that byproduct is also used as an animal feed for protein and oil products. So uh, let's go ahead and begin with a little bit of a, have a background history of some of your um, startups, um, Toria, and what Most Ventures has been able to do with them uh, leading up to this point. Uh, yep. So uh, we uh, some some of the startups here are our portfolio startups. Some of them are not. Uh, but uh, what unites them all is that they they present some some really cool, um, you know, uh, products launched here in Central Asia. Uh, talking about Cerebra, this is a this is a really um, 
it's a really cool startup with a with a breakthrough project enabling uh, you know a medical organizations hospital and and like uh, to quickly f- find uh, uh, stroke uh, uh, tendencies within within their patients and and diagnose them accordingly uh, I would like Jandos to kind of go into more detail about the, the technology but it's really exciting stuff Hey, uh, thanks for introduction. Uh, should I share my screen to go through the deck or should I just like go through it? How, how, how should it work better? Um, yeah, you can try sharing your screen and then um, let's see if we're able to, to bring it up. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, one second. I'm just pressing it. Share my screen. Share my... Can, can you see my screen? Just let me know whenever you can see my screen. Can you? One second. kind of what you and then, then when will you be able to share in the comments your deck if you can just talk through uh so you, you, you cannot see my screen right okay no. okay then um so this is what happens whenever you we use something else than the zoom so all the technical problems so um in a nutshell, I'll try to be uh, short. We are a startup um, currently based in Kazakhstan. Um, we're a health tech startup. So what we're doing, we're providing a medical software that's designed uh, for new radiologists uh, to help them detect uh, early signs of a stroke within three minutes. So we were founded back in 2018. Until date, we've been recognized by multiple healthcare giants. And recently, we've been named top one health tech startup by uh, Johnson & Johnson uh, in APAC region. Um, uh, what else? Uh, so, w- what is stroke? Uh, stroke is in severe medical condition where blood supply to certain parts of a uh, patient's brain is cut off. Unfortunately, the statistics are quite alarming. One in four people globally are above 21 years old are at risk of suffering a stroke. 37% of these patients uh, will die immediately or shortly after, whereas 60% of uh, those who survive will have a permanent disability. For comparison, COVID uh, death rate was only 1%. So compared to that, the stroke is like global epidemics. So why such an, like poor statistics? There are a number of factors. The first related to timing. Stroke is ex- extremely time sensitive disease. So whenever a patient suffers a stroke, he has up to six hours uh, to receive a treatment. If it doesn't happen, the brain tissues will die out. However, um, six to eight hours is needed for ischemic stroke uh, to be clearly visible for a human eye on a CT scan. So the first problem related to the, um, to the uh, timing and uh, the fact that uh, we uh, human eye has a kind of limitation. So even a qualified specialist because of let's say tiredness or any other reason may just miss uh, the early signs of stroke in a CT brain image. The, the, the second problem related to the human factor, such as there's a lack of uh, qualified new radiologists and there's a significant difference between uh, in radiologist qualification varying from one hospital ho- to hospital and to region to region. So, um, so in order to conquer this problem, we come up with an AI powered solution that helps uh, detect early signs of stroke within three minutes. So as a use case, how it happens, a patient with a stroke symptoms arrives to the hospital or stroke center he or she undergoes a CT uh, brain image uh, and the CT um, uh, machine automatically sends the CT brain image to our servers where our AI platform <laughs> analyzes and sends back the results to patient's mobile, uh, to the doctor's mobile and desktop application. So w- w- in a nutshell, what it does, it helps, uh, the AI algorithm helps to detect uh, signs of stroke and it, it, so that the neuro- neuroradiologist will not miss it so that the patient gets the timely treatment. Uh, Till date, uh, we have developed three modules for ischemic stroke, uh, for hemorrhagic stroke, and the CT heat map. Uh, I wish I I, I could show you the 
the snapshots and currently we are in R&D mode for other uh, modules such as for uh, magnetic uh, resonance MRI technology and this and contrast um, technology as well, CTP and CTA. Uh, in terms of uh, current results, 26 out of uh, 56 stroke centers here in Kazakhstan are using it on a daily basis to treat the patients. And our system has analyzed more than 42,000 real brain scans. Uh, currently, our, uh, uh, we're based in Kazakhstan, but recently we have set up our um, company in Delaware uh, in US. So we are actively working out the US market uh, currently. And we are a team of uh, 30 members. So that's about it, about us in a short, um, let's say. Thank you. We appreciate hearing how, how you all have developed. And it sounds like you created a technology that has multiple uses um, and is really helping advance the medical field. Um, I'm going to turn it to uh, Joshua so he can kind of touch base um, about his startup and tell y'all his journey as well. And um, then we'll go on to one of your most venture startups again. All right, I'm Joshua and I'm also here with Jacob Silva. He's uh, one of the, uh, he, he's on the conference call also. Uh, all right, so we're with Regulated Cloud. We're a two person uh, consulting shop. So we specialize in uh, consulting for uh, cloud engineers, uh, really huge companies. Uh, one of the problems we we uh, we started to uh, work through was dealing with uh, uh, with, with our transition to consumer products. So we want to get out of uh, consulting with uh, hourly bill rates. Uh, e even though cloud engineering is one of the most high in demand. Uh, uh, professions right now, especially in the U.S., uh, it's just the the type of work we weren't feeling. Uh, uh, it, it was just not uh, something that we wanted to do long term uh, anymore. Uh, we've been in IT and computer, uh, the computer uh, sector for uh, at least ten years, uh, both of us. And so, one of the ideas we had was going into consumer products, and so. Uh, one of the ventures that we're starting for this year is uh, building training aids for people suffering with dementia. And so we 3D print uh, models and we're also uh, uh, printing out uh, puzzles. Everything we use is based on a template. And then uh, we, we built these training aids and then we ship them out to, uh, to people who can really use them to help trigger a memory response. Uh, the other ideas we're, we're uh, also working through and uh, considering spinning off is uh, 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 lear learning. It's uh, using, uh, using Twitch as a, as a means to have students engage with, uh, with robotics. And so my brother, he's been working on a Twitch channel and the kids get on, they log in, they, uh, they can control the, robot, the robots and then they have competitions. And so those are the two ventures that we've been uh, working through for this year. And so they take 3D models of images of pictures um, that can kind of help have um, tactile member, memory mm -hmm. and, and working with Alzheimer's patients um, to preserve the memories that they have now. Um, so when any further development of the disease takes place, there is uh, memory stimulation with the 3D printed images. Um, so both in the medical field, um, like using innovations to, to help stabilize um, degenerate diseases. So, great. Well, um, uh, Tori, would you please introduce um, another one of your startups? We'd love to hear their entrepreneurial journey and where they're at right now. Yeah, actually talking about 3D imaging applications in uh, medicine, we have Dente AI, which uh, is a startup that uses artificial technology uh, to help dentists uh, interpret X-ray images, automate charting, seamlessly pair your chart using latest technology. Uh, but uh, without further ado, I'll pass it on to Asil Zat, who will tell you more. Uh, we're also based in Kazakhstan and also medtech startup. 
Uh, AI dentist is software uh, based on artificial intelligence for analyzing dental X-ray images. Uh, actually, oral health problem is global, and one of them uh, is jaw shrinking. Uh, researchers say that it is hidden epidemic. So, uh, yeah. To deal with this problem, dentists put braces on teeth. Uh, we found out that uh, before uh, each installation of braces, uh, the dentists do calculation manually with pencil and a ruler, uh, which takes an hour. So now we offer our tested uh, version of our product, which uh, do this calculation in a minute. Uh, based on artificial intelligence. So we save time for dentists and artificial intelligence uh, eliminate human error. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Uh, so, you know, it sounds like there's a lot of different uses for 3D printing um, that many of your entrepreneurs are working through as much as ours are as here. Um, Antish, I'm going to have you... Uh, talk a little bit more about Exchange Energy and some of the advancements that y'all have been working on um, through charging technology. For sure. Thanks, Karina. Um, so, yeah, Xcharge is a uh, EV infrastructure uh, provider and uh, OEM. We've basically re-engineered the charging infrastructure that uh, we've made available from the Level 3 side to be uh, more optimized for the North American grid here, which leads to a lot of benefits mainly in the form of ease of deployments, lower costs, and uh, I guess faster deployment overall, as well as uh, opens up the ability to install in places where you normally wouldn't be able to install a DC fast charger uh, because of infrastructure limitations. Um, it's more or less the first of its kind in the sense that no one's really taking this low voltage architecture uh, strategy in terms of their hardware design. So. We've been working on it for two years and have basically been cranking through uh, the product development cycle to get uh, this technology created and to a position where you can you know, start producing it at scale. Um, we have units in the ground in the US and are working on getting more. Uh, we're certified and now we're looking to further our presence through providing this in creative ways to communities to help you know, spur adoption of electric vehicles. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, it looks like we have one more startup from Central Asia. If you would like to also share a little bit more about your entrepreneurial journey and where you've gone. Yep, definitely. Well, uh, unfortunately, Bach Chan Dos, uh, CEO of Adapt, couldn't join us today. Uh, but uh, since he's not here, I'll take the, the privilege of um, describing what an Adapt startup is about. Essentially, Adapt is a startup that grows small businesses using the power of social media apps, such as TikTok, uh, Snapchat, uh, Instagram, and others. Uh, they essentially help you to build a mobile first online store for your small business brand. Uh, so the way it works is essentially you, you set up, um, you download an app called Adapt, uh, and it integrates seamlessly with platforms such as TikTok, uh, Instagram, and others. Uh, to basically uh, allow you to quickly upload your SKUs uh, of the items that you're going to sell and then quickly push it through to platforms such as TikTok and others uh, to help you sell over there. As you may know, uh, this year TikTok uh, achieved over a billion monthly active users, unleashing the power of social commerce. Uh, so it makes perfect sense to sell on that platform, especially given uh, the massive popularity of uh, this app among, you know, uh, the a younger generation, Generation Z, uh, Generation X, and others. Um, so this application allows you to quickly push your uh, sales inventory onto the platform and uh, enjoy a seamless you know, uh, sales experience without having to do much. You essentially don't even have to leave home. You can have all of your inventory at home and sell from home. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, the kind of leans into what you and uh, Jacob have been working on the, and being able to use the robotics to, to stimulate some of the gamification. So there's definitely a conversation there. 
Uh, so we're going to um, have Monica De La Rosa speak about eco rescue from our side. And then um, I'd love for us to conclude the fireside chat with some of our startups asking one another uh, questions and relatable uh, curiosities about their entrepreneurial journey. So Monica. Hi. Uh, like I said, uh, our company breeds worms on black, it's black soldier fly larvae on food waste, and they have a natural heating element uh, that processes the food a lot faster. And so we, we do this in an environment controlled area, which helps uh, breed them and collect the food waste in a fast manner. We turn around and sell the worms as a food protein and or create an oil based system out of it. And uh, also the uh, frass can be sold as a high nitrate soil. And we have actually different uh, processes in place. But this, this is a closed loop system, which it diverts food waste from the landfill, plus creating a food source for animals and in different parts of other countries, uh, food protein sources for human consumption. So it's a closed loop, uh, loop system that helps expedite um, the composting uh, process and has multiple uses um, that are protein based for animal feed um, and even human grade consumption. So um, Atish, do you have any uh, questions for some of the Central uh, Asian uh, startups that are here with us today? or curiosities about what they've done on their entrepreneurial journey. And then I'll turn it over to um, your team, um, Tori, if you want to ask a few questions. Yeah, I mean, I guess this is more of a general question to all three of the startups, but what's your experience been uh, in regards to, you know, outward relations and communications with, you know, countries and individuals from other sides uh, in say the realm of fundraising or getting, uh, traction like given you're based out of kazakhstan you know what are some of the difficulties or you know, interesting uh you know conversations you've had because of that yeah i i guess i can answer that question because like for the, for the past three four months we were like uh actively fundraising and particularly we we're targeting the the international vcs um the first thing i will tell it, it it's quite hard so like the startups who are based in, let's say, in developed world, US, uh, where there's like, uh, where the startup infrastructure, there's a VC firms, it's, it's way easier. As long as you have like a working product, I think you, you, you get the money. But when it comes to a startup uh, coming from a, from a country, from a Central Asian country, it's quite hard. And especially when you're pitching to a VC that has never heard about your country, cannot even spell your country's name, that's quite uh, hard to, you know, um, overcome that a bit skepticism. Uh, and like sometimes it's also valid from their side. Um, we had a kind of uh, open conversation with one of the VCs. They, they, they were telling me like, Randos, look, I mean, you guys have a great product, but uh, you are located quite far. Um, there's a language barrier. There's a um, different jurisdiction. And even if we support them with financially, we will not be able to to give you that kind of uh, VC support in terms of network, in terms of like uh, any type, any other types of supports connecting with the industry experts, because you just you're just located uh, you're located quite far, and um, that was a kind of feedback that we're getting but uh, that was I guess one of the reasons uh, in addition to the actually the market size of US that we are uh, setting up our HQ in US just to add that uh, the brand name first and get that um, let's say tangible um, of the brand name to our uh, to our startup I guess that's about like overcoming that uh, I guess thank you that was actually kind of refreshing to hear. We actually face a lot of the sim similar problems uh, from our side, actually, not necessarily because we're US based, but my company is very global in terms of our partnerships. So a lot of the difficulties that you're more or less facing are some that I'm also facing right now. So it's wow. interesting to hear. Thank you for sharing. That's really helpful to hear. And that's one of the intentions of Global Entrepreneurship Week is to really bring 
different entrepreneurs from different industries um, and countries uh, that we get to hear their story and, and some of those similarities come forward. So it's really helpful to, to hear that. And like you said, Atish, it's very refreshing as well to hear that entrepreneurial journeys are, are similar no matter what country you're from. Um, Toria, is there another uh, startup that you want to uh, maybe ask a question or um, Azel, if you have a, uh, a question for some of our startups as well? Uh, well, actually, I had a follow-on question to Atish's uh, question, which is regarding fundraising. Um, how do you find your fund fundraising journey? Uh, in, in, I guess you're, you're all based in the United States, uh, and since it's a different region, and it's a, it's a much larger market, uh, what was your journey like, and uh, what kind of maybe learning tips you could share with our startups as they may embark on, on the same journeys in the future? Uh, for sure. Um... Yeah, my fundraising journey has been uh, interesting. Uh, so my startup's different in the sense that we're focused on hardware, uh, which is very rare uh, in terms of the startup makeup in the US. A lot of startups you see here are focused on software or some sort of service. Uh, but when you get into a hardware product, um, especially the caliber of ours, um, it's a very expensive and you know capex intensive high risk venture often seen by uh, VC. So that's one thing that we've, you know, it's one difficulty we face. The other thing is we're actually kind of contrarian in terms of the belief that's often seen in the space we're working in. Um, so what we often get hit with a lot of skepticism uh, when we actually first present our product or our pitch. Um, so far, I've been more or less trying to fundraise for the past three months. Um, and we've had to do a lot of uh, reapproaching in terms of how we pitch the company, how we evaluate uh, the asks, how we kind of value ourselves and position our valuations. Um, what, you know, the three main things that I've kind of determined is one, uh, having a physical product and presenting it uh, in a way that kind of shows that this is, you know, a magical technology or it's not magical, it's actually real, uh, is very important in terms of getting, uh, you know, people to understand. Uh, two, your pitch is always going to change and you should you know, tailor your pitch uh, in re in relation to, you know, the person you're pitching to. Um, so that kind of leads into the third point. It's easier to chase, you know, 10 good leads than 100 not good leads. So, you know, we're clean tech and we're hardware focused. We have to focus on people who understand clean tech and have the appetite to, you know, fund a hardware focused company. So a lot of the work that we've been doing more so recently has been actually focused on, well, has been focused on, uh, you know, pitching to companies that understand this space and really tailoring our uh, pitches in relation to what their investment philosophies are. It's kind of like the way I like to look at it, it's kind of like applying to a job. You have to apply to a lot of volume, but you have to also make sure that the volume that you're applying to is relevant. Um, and it's not in any way easy, but it also depends on where you are in the company. We're trying to raise a seed. Um, so that's usually the hardest to raise. Um, if you're trying to do a series A, it's easier to do, but you're under more scrutiny. So like, it's never really easy. It's just different barriers that you're faced. Seems like you have a lot of, uh, relatable nods going on there. Do you want to give us some more feedback of what you're relating to? Yeah. I'm just echoing what Atish is saying. Like it's, it's very important to address your let's say your pitch to the to the right uh, vc firm so there's no point like in wasting your energy and like if you're a seed stage or series a and trying to convince let's say uh, late late stage um, vcs to at least to uh, agree to a call or there's no point in just you just waste your energy his energy and sometimes you may find it to be disappointing whenever somebody's not replying to your email etc and regarding that tailoring your um, pitch that I think that totally makes sense and you have to know like what your VC wants sometimes like some VCs they are not only looking let's say financial incentives but they may also looking for the let's say social impact so adding social impact part to to that VC uh, that would really add a, add a lot of value I guess yeah that's that's the things that I guess of course common uh, with Atish. 
Thank you. Monica, do you have anything to add to that? I know um, you're in a very similar uh, journey phase as well. Yes. Um, well, because it's uh, insects are hard to breed. And so the technology behind that is something that we have to show. And so we do have a place to put the facility on. And so we have two different models. We have a mobile model and we're working on um, a smaller facility for uh, growth and expansion. Um, but it's just a matter of getting the VCs to understand the, the technology behind the insect breeding with the environment controlled and the process that goes in between all of that. So those are the some of the difficulties that I, I face. But I think showing each stage and what the products can provide um, ends up being the, the winner, which is showing that if you can get a truckload of waste that takes six months to compost and the worms can uh, eat through that waste in seven to 15 days, then, then that's, the, that's what we have to show when we make the presentations. So I'm uh, curious about uh, you having a physical product and um, some of the, the challenges you might be faced with as well whenever you're working with different partners, because I know uh, Joshua and Jacob have had uh, similar um, struggles when they're thinking about what's the right partner and, and how to showcase your, your product. Asel, I think you're still muted if you want to unmute. Let's see. Let me see if I can help you. Okay, if you look at the bottom, you should be able to unmute yourself if you want to share. Uh, Jake and Joshua, do you want to kind of talk about some of the partners that you've oh, worked okay. with? Yeah. So, uh, so for fundraising, but so most of our ideas, I would say like 90% of the, of the funding, it, we're self-funded. And so a lot of it's coming from straight from our pockets, you know, our wallets, and then also uh, the revenues that we make from the consulting practice. But we are also... Uh, going to conferences and competitions. So, for example, next month we're going to a competition in San Francisco, and to hopefully, I think that one, that uh, the the for that competition, it, they're the the winners are are uh, offered a compensation package and uh, some tools and resources. And uh, so, over here in the U.S. The competition sometimes they pay upwards to like a hundred thousand dollars, sometimes a million dollars, in in uh, in their in, in the resources that they provide, and so that's the strategy we're uh, we're pursuing right now. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. and I think also what one of the things that you've brought up before um, in other forums is mm -hmm. tailoring y'all's product to the oh. partner and. Um, mm -hmm. And where you have to like kind of diversify your focus. Okay, yeah. So with all of our ideas, so this year we've been focused on spinning out uh, a new ventures. And so every time we go to conferences or talk to our friends or family, we're always trying to work on a pitch. And then we're also uh, tweaking our ideas based on feedback. So for example, uh, we have like some of our friends, they're engineers, some of our friends, they work in healthcare, or in counseling. And so uh, every time we, we try to explain our, our product or whatever our idea is, uh, we just take notes and then, uh, you know, we have to have thick skin and we accept the criticism. And so some of our clients uh, that we work with or some of the partners that we work with, like Splash is a really good uh, partnership. So like over here at Splash, we have, it's a co-working uh, facility, but they also help coordinate uh, with uh, with conferences, meetings. Uh, it's great for networking over here. So, like the networking opportunities 
in co-working facilities is has been uh, very helpful for us. So that way we get practice on on talking. So like so for us because the type of work we 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 mostly do, especially in the past, is uh, we're just glued to our screens, and so a lot of times, you know, trying to find those distractions so we can uh, start talking is is uh, it's like those are like golden for us. So, like for example, in our office, we have uh, two, we have we have contractors that work with us or uh, like friends who help us out, and one of their most important jobs is to to hear us talk. So like every time, because sometimes when we go from, you know, we go from the te- we go from the the computer screen, and then we do a one eighty and start talking to people. It's like you know the brain has to, you know, we have to disengage from the clients. You know, we're like my brother; he's working with the, a huge bank right now, and uh, it's it, like it's really tough. And so our friends who work with us, their number one job is like give us feedback when we have an idea that we just think of like on spot. And so we'll just turn towards them and then we'll just like start forming an argument. And so like these kind of partnerships, they're really good for us because uh, one, we're like some, like with our friends, we're not having to pay them uh, a huge compensation package with uh, like in our, like in cloud engineering, the the compensation, compensation package over here is easily six feet. And so, uh, working with our, our friends and family, we're, we're we're able to save a lot of money on on uh, getting feedback. That's uh, like live feedback is is something we're able to benefit on with that. Yeah, I just wanted to echo whatever you're saying that like getting the feedback uh, from the VCs, it, it's extremely uh, important because like you're spending your time, you're spending your energy, I guess. I mean, um, you should get that feedback, right? But sometimes the, the feedback from VCs, uh, some of them are, are are smart. Some of them are just nonsense. I'm just like from, from, from my experience saying that like uh, we just shouldn't take uh, every suggestion uh, uh, as a kind of for let's say um as a solid that we, should, we, we don't have to incorporate it sometimes and w- w- what i find it uh, most interesting is like the feedback from the real industry experts that's quite valuable so usually the vcs can give you the feedback in terms of like how, how to sell in terms of marketing part how to structure your pitch deck etc but that secret sauce i guess it's coming from the real industry experts who are there who can give you the real feedback be it on your product or beat on your product market fit and yeah that's what i also noticed during my teaching thank you for that yeah it sounds like in each journey y'all have different paths but you've had similar kind of bumps and hurdles and i know i teach can uh, really attest to that as well uh, very similar um azel you came back with us if you had anything you wanted to add you want to uh, try to see if you're able. Yeah, here I am. Yay. <laughs> yeah, so what the question was earlier is um, you selecting your partners and how you work with them since you all have um, a 3D physical product, uh, what some of those challenges might have been for you. Mm, actually, our startup at early stage precede and uh, we haven't any experience in uh, pitching and with working with partners or VC, uh, but uh, we're on the, this way. <laughs> so where are you right now and um, what's been some of the, the earlier developments uh, with your startup? Yeah, we have our first MVP and uh, we join in the competition among startups and won uh, first uh, investments. So now we are, um, try to finish our product and uh, sell. Uh, and now we are at pre-sale stage, I think. <laughs> Awesome. Well, we uh, wish you luck on your uh, next uh, pitch that you're going to be working on and then um, any of the programs that it sounds like Most Ventures is helping you with. 
So does anyone have anything else they would like to add, uh, kind of some reflections on our conversation here today during Global Entrepreneurship Week? Or, Tori, if there's any uh, programs that y'all are launching, uh, we'd love to hear about those as well. Sure. I actually wanted to share a bit more about the uh, uh, sort of the infrastructure in place in case uh, you guys want to come to Kazakhstan one day with your startup. Uh, and in general, we're, we're open to any startups that are looking to explore the Central Asian region, because in my opinion, it's, and it's not, not only in my opinion, it's a hugely underexploited region with a lot of opportunities in place. So we, I'm here in uh, Most Hub Almaty, with this beautiful logo behind me. And uh, also uh, I'm sitting in a, in a dark room, partly because we have a uh, smart lightning system here with dimming. Uh, so I need to walk around. Uh, but essentially, what we have here is uh, is, a, is an eight and is an eight story building uh, with a with an absolutely fantastic view on the mountains and the rest of the city, uh, which was constructed uh, just this year. We opened just in June this year, uh, but uh, this construction is the result of the organic growth of our holding and ten years of experience as a business incubator. Uh, so we've been around. Uh, and we'll continue to build bridges, you know, between tech entrepreneurs and investors from Central Asia and the West in this new technological space. It's uh, 5,200 square meters of space, uh, of which 800 square meters is just a terrace from which you can walk around and enjoy the views. Uh, the number of workplaces is around 800 as of last count. It will grow because we are occupying more and more uh, floors in, inside the building. Um, and uh, we're, it's essentially a, um, it's an open space. I could walk around and show you, uh, but that kind of leads me to, to the question. Uh, obviously we know Splash co-working, but for the startups here, I guess it would be refreshing and, and informative to learn. You know, uh, once what our startups like um, Cerebra or AI Dent or anyone else uh, embark on their trip to the, to the United States, should they decide so? You know, what, uh, what support can they get at, for example, Splash Co working in uh, San Marcos, Texas? Well, that is a wonderful question. We really enjoyed hosting most ventures here in San Marcos, Texas. Uh, when y'all came in September, you were able to meet with our mayor as well as our assistant city manager and our economic development partnership. So one of the um, areas that we understood needed more support was through the visa process. Um, we actually uh, met with one of our representatives to kind of high level discuss how we could get support from the state um, to help with that visa process and uh, try to streamline you all visiting um, here in Texas and being able to establish yourselves. And interchangeably, we'd love for our startups to be able to go over to Kazakhstan and um, explore somewhat of a, a residency or what a program might look like to have us have um, an exchange. So that is definitely something that we know we want to be able to extend to you, everyone um, coming over here, as well as um, any of our startups exploring what they would be able to um, establish there. And I mean, you've already sold us uh, with the beautiful view that you've described. Uh, we were able to take um, your uh, leadership team with most ventures to our river and the headwaters um, at our um, spring fed river. And it was nice because we got to hear stories from uh, your hometown and the surrounding areas of the beautiful uh, natural um, assets that you have to enjoy. Uh, so I know that there's definitely the excitement and intrigued um, discovery that we'd like to have um, in an exchange uh, with your startups and ours as well. So um, to reiterate, you know, what we could do to be able to support is look at streamlining that visa process, getting the support from our Texas-based representatives and our economic development partnership that you were able to meet when um, Most Ventures uh, leadership team was here in San Marcos. Perfect. Well, that's exciting. Thank you very much for sharing that. Yeah, so again, thank you for uh, the fireside chat today. We enjoyed hearing from everyone uh, during Global Entrepreneurship Week. This celebrates the 15th anniversary of Global Entrepreneurship Week, which is um, a program that is ran, yes, 
by uh, Global Entrepreneurship Network. Um, they bring us Global Entrepreneurship Congress, as well as multiple um, competitions throughout the year. So we'll definitely be sharing with you uh, those startup uh, competitions that are hosted um, through the, the GIN Network and our uh, relationships here that are, that are globally um, connected as well. So with this, we want to say bye to everyone. Thank you so much for taking some time in your evening to join us. Morning time here in the States. And we hope to keep these conversations going because there's so much more that we are related um, and have in common than we don't. And I think these conversations help entrepreneurs understand that they're not alone. And there's very similar um, experiences that we, we end up feeling very isolated sometimes, experiencing on our own, but it, it's helpful to know that we're not the only entrepreneur out there that's going through this journey. So again, thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everyone. Thanks, bye. Thank you guys. Thanks, bye. bye.